द डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल और रिस्पॉन्स वेरिएबल इज मेजर्ड टू सी द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल दैट द इम्पैक्ट दैट द इंडिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल कास्ट ऑन द डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल नो दिस रिस्पॉन्स वेरिएबल is measured differently in different experimental situations like in some cases it might be the number of errors that a rat make in a maze or it can be how accurately a ball is uh, thrown into the basket or how quickly the task is done so depending on the type of the experiment how the response will be measured differs but in every situation one thing is common that is whatever the response may be it should be measured as precisely as possible and for this certain techniques or methods of measurements of dv are generally discussed in the experimental situations now the most frequently that are used uh will be discussed the first of its kind is accuracy now what do you know about accuracy whenever you hear the term it's how accurately the work is done that is what the target is given to you how accurately that target is achieved like um, for example in case of a rifle shooting if you take the example of a rifle shooting if when the rifle is fired if the rifle is exactly hits the bull's eye that is the center of the circle if it hits that then you have scored a most accurate score then if there are actually if you see a shooting space there are this circle a, a circle and there are inner circles made in this with a center dot so if you are hitting the center dot you are the most accurate then if you are hitting on the first line on the outer circle then it's like your accuracy slightly differs then it can be on the outer on another outer circle or in between so the most accurate one is the one if you shoot at the center but if it differs then obviously your accuracy is differing it's not as accurate or it's not the bang on or the bull's eye but depending on how you are differing how much you are shifting from the perfect accurate spot that marks your accuracy of response now this can be in more simpler things if it's like how, how many ball you can basket if you throw a basketball if you throw a ball from a line and you try to see then how how many you manage to score how many balls you manage to basket if you are throwing it from a finishing line so how accurately the work is done the next is latency the latency is basically the time that it takes to begin a response that is the time that the subject takes to start the response generally it is taken for the reaction time studies here the experimenter provides a signal to which the participant has to respond and this time interval between the onset of the stimulus and onset of the response is measured now see here it is not the time for the response it is how many how much time you are taking or the subject is taking to start the response that is to make the response not the total response it's the start of the response that marks that is the stimulus is presented to you and as the stimulus is coming the from that to the start of the response this is latency of this is the latency measure of the response that is the time interval now you can uh, again see this in case of the races if you if you have seen the 100 meters race the 500 meter race when a rifle is shot the participants they start to run so how quickly how fast you react to that sound of the rifle so as the rifle is shot the person is starting to run this time gap this reaction time this is called the latency 
next you are coming to the speed this is as you the name you are suggesting it is how quickly how how quickly you can do it how quickly you can finish the work generally it is done in case of the studies where your uh, duration is taken into account that means uh, how long it takes for the subject to complete the response once it has been started like um, for in the problem solving studies when we are doing the problem solving studies how much the person how quickly the person can solve the problems the jumble words that is the time taken into account that is how quickly you can do that work like for again for in case of that uh, running thing if you are taking for the athletes how quickly or in what time you are completing the total circle of the field the 100 meter how how quickly you can complete that is the speed that is a kind of response measure next we are coming to the frequency and rate now uh, frequency is, is the measure that is um, it it measures the number of times a response occurs as in how many responses an organism makes before the extinction sets in okay before we go on to the frequency let us first see just just make it uh, a point there is a difference between latency and speed don't confuse between them latency is the distinction it is the time between the start of the that is the onset of the stimulus and the onset of the response this is the mid time between the onset of stimulus and the onset of response but for the speed is the time between the onset of response and termination of response that is the total response time how much time the person took to complete the response from onset of response to extinction of response to termination of response so this is the basic difference between latency and speed don't confuse between them okay next uh, we were doing the frequency and rate so whether um, we the responses generally we see for the frequency how uh, it is how, how many times a response is occurring in an experimental situation that is if the frequency of responding is counted for a given period of time the rate of responding can be computed if a for example if a response is made 10 times in a minute the responding rate will be then 10 responses per minute the rate gives an indication of probability of responses the higher the rate the greater the probability that it will occur in the situation at the same future time that means for the frequency of responses we get the number of times the number of times the response is occurring and for the rate it gives you the probability of how many time the response can occur like for example if something how we compute the rate if you get something that some responses are it's like uh, in how how we can say in 2 seconds a person can do five things if it is done in if if two if in 2 seconds the person can five uh, do it in five five things then what will be the rate in 1 minute that will be we will be computing this in regard to 60 seconds that means in 2 seconds a person is doing five things that means in 1 second he is doing 5 by 2 and in 60 seconds he will be doing 5 by 2 into 60 so this is the way how rate is computed so for the frequency we are getting the exact number how many times the subject is doing the work and rate is the probability of how many uh, time how uh, what is the probable rate of doing the work for the subject for in fact this can predict how many times the subject can do the work in future also and for the response rate is often used in experiments like uh, we have seen for the um, 
when uh, in the skinner box now there are certain other apart from this whatever we discussed additional response measure can be the ability that a person can manifest for example how many problems of increasing difficulty one solves with an unlimited amount of time or the intensity of the response for example the amplitude of the galvanic response in a conditioning study in fact amplitude is a measure of dependent variable when we are doing experiments on arousal when you people will be doing experiments on arousal and you'll see here the amplitude of the respiratory curve is measured for assessing the arousal levels of the subjects now sometimes it is difficult to measure the dependent variable adequately with any of these techniques in this event one might devise a rating scale also a rating scale for anxiety may have five gradations or like that so it can be a rating scale can be used like it can be a four point scale a five point scale a six point scale it can be used to assess the anxiety of a person objective tests can also serve as dependent variable measures for example one might uh, wish to know whether uh, physiotherapy decreases a person's neurotic tendency for this any of the tests that assesses the neurotic tendency can be first provided before giving the psychotherapy so that we can assess what is the level of anxiety what is the level of uh, neuroticism before assess um, and before doing psychotherapy then after doing psychotherapy again the same test can be administered and see if there is any difference in the neurotic tendencies of the person so if there is a difference then that can be actually due to the effect of psychotherapy that was done in between so there are actually various techniques and various ways by which we measure the dependent variables and this measuring techniques or measuring methods they give us the exact value that shows the effect of independent variable on the dependent variable this is very important for your viva and for your obviously general conceptions if you have any doubt regarding whatever we have discussed today you can obviously tell me and we will be discussing it in our doubt clearing class thank you class